Okay, so we're back in the workshop again today. Uh, it's autumn time here in the UK. That's still in here. But what I wanted to look at today was this. It's Japanese maple, the regular green leaf variety. And I'm just going to walk you through my uh, routine for autumn pruning. You can see we've got lots of nice growth on this tree from the summer. It's had a really good year. I bought this tree five, six years ago, and this is typical with these things, it was in a fairly poor state. I've uh, been losing lots of branches, which is why there's some big holes in it. And uh, so first thing we had to do, as always, sort out the pot, get it completely bare rooted. It's got a massive nabari on this tree, but most of that nabari was buried in soil and moss because it hadn't been repotted for so many years and it had been losing branches, which you'll be able to see as we get into this. So I'm about three years into restoring this tree and it's done very well. It's been extremely vigorous since it's been in the big pot, which it's been in for two seasons now. All this long growth on here, that was actually the third break of growth that it made. And I just left that uh, to do its thing. So it's had already had two hard prunes this year and so now like I said I'm just going to walk you through really just autumn pruning for this uh, and uh, what I go through the techniques I use to sort of build the ramification correct things as they go I'm not a great fan of wiring on maples it doesn't tend to produce a particularly natural result there has been some wire on this over the years uh, there are a few pruning scars because we've had to remove some branches here and there But I think once we get these leaves off, I think you'll agree. This is a fairly impressive tree uh, So the first thing we need to do is to start To remove all this lovely red foliage, which is a bit sad, but it has to be done As you can see the autumn color is fairly advanced on this tree. Uh, it's mid-november and If I was to leave this outside for probably another week most of this foliage would disappear on its own with the wind, but it uh, doesn't really make a lot of sense to take the leaves off. You could just let that happen, but it's a nice enjoyable thing to do. And part of the reason why I'm sort of pushing it ahead and removing the leaves early is because I can do the pruning that I need to do and the tidying up. And it's still got uh, hopefully a few more weeks before we see a frost so it can settle itself in uh, before the really cold weather gets here. And because I've let all this go, you can see there's no green here. And because of that, you know that these leaves are just going to fall away really easily. Now, when you take the leaves off a maple, it's not a good idea to pull them because if you do, if they're on tiny little twigs, you can pull the twigs off, you can damage the buds. But if you push the leaves backwards along the twig, you'll find that uh, at this stage, you can see here, they just they just fall off really easily. So we just just pull them backwards a little bit, and away they uh, away they come. And you can be sure that we're doing no damage at all to the buds or the very fine twigs and ramification. Personally, I find this a very rewarding and enjoyable thing to do because you're beginning to uncover all the uh, the new ramification that you built up over the summer, and this is the first chance to see that improvement in the quality uh, in the quality of the tree. So you just have to bear with me while I get all this lot cleaned off. I use tweezers; got these nice Masakuni tweezers. Work really well for getting in here. I've got little short fat fingers, obviously I don't want to be breaking any of that precious ramification so getting inside here tweezers are really uh, really good for that.
gentle leaves. If you give them a little push, most of them will just fall away. But if they're a little tight and they don't want to let go, just push them backwards and they just pop off. Pretty easy. And as I say, if you do that, you're not going to uh, you're not going to damage any of these lovely little tiny uh, little tiny twigs. Because this time of year, maples are still full of sap, and so they can be. Uh, they can be quite brittle until they've had uh, had a frost. So you're just working, working little by little, carefully, carefully. As I say, generally just a little push, and they'll just fall. The leaves are still green. You'll find they won't come off very easily, but because uh, this is so close to its natural leaf drop, they're already separating really easily. leaves all removed and always a great time of year because you get to see the uh, progress that the tree has made over the summer as I said this tree was in a poor state when I got it and it had lost quite a lot of branches so you can look in here here was one that died off you can see that uh, that cuts closed over the last two years uh, there's another one here this one in particular you can see it's just a long straight piece but when I bought this this was a tiny little branch like one of these little twigs up here and it just had a couple of buds and it was barely alive uh, had I lost out I would have had a big hole in the front of this tree you can see the uh, the space that that takes up and uh, so I've managed to save it the way I've done that is to allow it to grow so it actually did three years without being pruned at all and you can see there it's just a thick straight straight bit with lots of buds on the end but the point is there are lots of buds on the end now you can see here this little brown bit that's where I cut this branch midsummer. I let it leaf out initially and then cut it in the midsummer. so that what that's doing is starting to retwig that branch so at some point we're going to have to shorten that back to a uh, growth that lives further back and you can see even in here we've got little buds popping up so this branch rather than dying off now it's three times the size it was and that's got a future the trouble with maples is they tend to get quite weak over a long period of time because most people just grow them for maybe four leaf extensions and then they prune them back perhaps somebody in the know would remove a few of the larger leaves to keep the structure open but typically the way a maple grows being a deciduous tree it likes to grow on the ends of the branches and so these inner parts tend to get quite bare and they get long so over a period of time the branches just get longer and longer growing away from the trunk with all the ramification on the ends that makes for a very poor quality bonsai tree so let's just take a look at this one here you can see it's had some wire on it but you can see from all the marks and cuts over the years there's a big cut here there's been another one from here one from here one from here 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 
Uh, it's had a little bit of wire through here which has obviously bent this piece uh, and then it's been grown as a fork and again you can see a little more wire scarring there but it forks nicely uh, this isn't the prettiest and it's a bit long but there are the beginnings of one or two buds in here we can begin to restore that but when we get to the end of it you can see here all the ramification is there but having said that three years ago there wasn't any ramification all we had was this primary branch we had the secondary branch and then the tertiary branches and they had a couple of buds on the end of each so one of the primary issues you have uh, with maples is obviously the apical dominance and if you're too careful if you're too keen on pruning to keep the summer image nice and neat and tight you will find that you will uh, get this die back on the inner parts of the tree where the light's not getting to and also the vigor of a maple can uh, decline quite quickly it can just take just a few years for that to begin to happen and when it does happen you start to lose branches and you can see over the history of this tree it's lost quite a few there was one down here there's a one here we already looked at there was a big one here and there's been several up through here as well that it's lost but they would have been smaller branches potentially that just got basically uh, shaded out by the foliage you tend to find like I say these are very apically dominant but in order to restore a maple you have to build the vigor and get it really strong before you start to prune back otherwise if you prune back really hard into old growth and the tree is quite weak you will find that you'll start to lose some of those branches because if there's not enough buds on the branch the branch just won't grow and so in order it's counterintuitive but in order to push the growth back for a period we have to allow this tree to grow so last year uh, we let this grow more or less unchecked for the whole season and at one point it had nearly two meters of growth this year I started to intervene we gave it a good autumn prune last year uh, and then I've allowed it to grow and then after the first break of growth which was absolutely massive I pruned it back hard and then it had a, the second break just got a small amount of pruning and then this third break as I mentioned earlier has just been allowed to grow but if you look where this stuff has extended you can see how thick that is now this twig here that wasn't there two years ago so you can see that by growing it does allow the, uh, the the tree to really start to build lots of new ramification but once the tree has restored its energy you then have to start to prune much earlier so potentially we might just nip the initial buds as they come out in the stronger areas and leave the weaker areas and then as it grows through the summer constantly pruning the stronger areas but leaving the weaker areas and removing leaves uh, to let the light in to get the inner growth so you, by keeping the growth of the tree open in the summer and removing big leaves and long shoots we do start to get some light into the tree and you can see all over this tree particularly here you can see these little inner buds now they don't look like much at the moment but they are the future for this tree because over a period of time they're going to grow and develop and that's going to give us pruning options for the future so all over this you can see this nice colored growth on the ends that's all this year's growth so you can see the ramification of this tree has improved significantly over this year so this combination of growing the tree and allowing it to run and then controlling it with pruning really does rebuild the vigor and as the vigor rebuilds the back budding begins to appear we can start to shorten the branches back and rebuild the ramification and once we get to the autumn what we're looking to do today is just give this a tidy up so we've got all these long these long shoots which obviously we're going to shorten back we've got a few areas like this where we've got real sort of knuckles starting to form uh, here's another branch that I've grown out you can see there's nothing on that but that was pruned for the first time this year and it's made some uh, buds further back in so we're going to be able to use that we don't tend to style maples with uh, wire typically just a little correction here and there that's best done in the summer not over the winter so your leaf pruning in the spring uh, or early summer and then a little wiring and that uh, helps to correct any shape issues that we might have with this tree so what I'm going to do now is just walk you through the, uh, the pruning of this 
As with most things in bonsai, pruning maples is not rocket science. It helps to have the right tools. And so what we're going to be using today is this little Japanese uh, very fine twig cutter. It's modelled on a branch cutter uh, and you can see it's got an angled head. But it just enables us to get in amongst this fine ramification really, really well. It's an expensive tool, but nothing else really does the same job. And of course, a pair of scissors. We want a nice thin strong point on these and with maples because the bark is very thin it's really important that the tools we use are really sharp because we need to make clean cuts. If we don't make clean cuts we tend to get knuckles and lumps where they heal. So uh, once we get into one or two larger cuts I'll show you. But uh, the primary work we're going to be able to do today or we're going to be doing today is going to be with this, uh, with this brilliant little branch cutter, twig cutter. Now because we're restoring this tree we've still got a few issues with weaker branches and here you can see we've got a little twig here, we've got a lovely strong piece of growth here and here's a little piece that uh, has been there a long time and that's dried out so we just take that off. But we need to just prune that really carefully so that we just take that back to live material, that way that's going to uh, grow over. One of the things that bugs me about maple is the way that people prune them and they leave these little dead stubs in amongst the, uh, the branch structure. So you can see here, this has been pruned, uh, it's grown subsequently from beneath the prune, but there's this little dead piece uh, stuck in the middle here. So we go in with this lovely little tool and we can take, uh, we can take those out, there's a bud we don't, we don't need. And we can just get into the ends of these and take all these little dead bits out. When you're pruning in the summer, this tends to happen because you can't prune as accurately as this when the tree is covered in uh, is covered in leaves. So one of the things we're going to be doing today is going through all of this, taking all these little dead stubs out and cleaning all these, uh, cleaning up all these little forks nicely. As I'm pruning through a maple, all these jobs are being done simultaneously. So we're cleaning out those little forks. Now, looking at this branch, you can see we've got this stronger growth on the ends. You can see this has grown. Uh, probably three, four inches on the ends. And then in here, perhaps you can just see this little guy here, and you can see that's got lots of buds on it, but it's really quite weak. So we're not, we don't prune weak areas, we prune the stronger areas. And because this branch is already the length we need, what I just do is go through with scissors and just prune that back, right up to the buds, just take the length out. Bear in mind this will grow really strongly next year because obviously it's already a strong part of the tree. So we can prune this uh, quite happily, knowing there's not gonna be any issues here. So what I'm doing is pruning these back, in this instance, to the first set of buds. But you can see, we've got these little buds on the end, but we've also got some buds further back. Uh, there's a little dead piece in there. This little weak one's got a little dead end in there. We take that out and that one's crossing so I'll take that one out and you can see that's all that's required on that got rid of all the dead ends and that's pushed that back nicely so we've got these smaller buds in uh, in here now they'll uh, they'll develop nicely next year plus we've got quite a few along the length of this branch actually right the way back to where it emanates from the primary branch uh, so we're like I say we're pruning these stronger areas back but then if we look at this area you can see it's nowhere near as strong so with that we leave a little bit extra so we're leaving the, the, the first buds and then second buds and that's enough for that so like I say what we're trying to do is prune this in such a way that we create nice uh, and attractive structure but we're also looking to uh, balance the vigor so always with any deciduous tree pruning hardest in the stronger areas and very little if any at all in the weaker areas. Looking at this branch, bearing in mind we are on the lowest branches on this tree so obviously this is uh, likely to be the weakest area. So with this we've got some nice ramification building here, we've got no ugly knuckles or anything forming up at all. So all we have to do on this little one take a couple of these upper stronger ones because you build a maple uh, you build depth in the pad by layering it and so that's uh, starting to achieve that and so with that one that's all that's all that's necessary that's it so next getting on to the uh, inside of this tree 
you can see there's a lower branch here we may or may not need that but as you can see what's on the end it's not particularly strong although it's grown quite well but it's still a very thin spindly weak branch now I'm just going to leave that exactly as it is and let that grow next year that will thicken it will increase uh, increase its vigor and then at that time I'll decide whether I want to keep that or not but like I say when you have weak areas don't prune just leave them uh, there's always another year and we'll come back to that and have a look at that for next year so next looking at this uh, nice big back branch see that's beautifully structured no issues on that at all we've got some uh, still some slightly weaker shoots in the back here here and here but they're full of buds so they're all good uh, one or two weak parts that have died off like here so we can take that and we've got these stronger areas where we've allowed this to grow out so we just prune those appropriate to uh, how we want this to develop so it's no big deal we're looking uh, for building maples we're looking at constant small course corrections rather than a big deal like we might do say with a pine where we just wire the whole tree and style it in one go with maples it doesn't work like that we just build these trees little by little now this area is a classic what a maple will do a strong a strong shoot that's grown well over the summer it's been pruned in the summer at this point here and then you can see uh, it's, uh, it's grown uh, again after that now you can see there are quite a lot of buds here so if I take this dead piece out of the middle there clean that back you can see we've got this straight growth here and straight growth here which is quite strong but that's okay because we can use a little extra length on here but what we don't want this to do is start to develop into a knuckle which you can see it's already starting to get fat and that's because there are so many buds growing from that point so uh, what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do with this is just go in with the little cutters and take out the buds we don't want this is bud selection it's important if we allow that to grow and then prune it afterwards that will just get fat and that will ruin the quality of this tree as bonsai so this bud selection where we get these little knuckles is really important if by the spring the buds reform which is unlikely uh, they just need rubbing off but uh, this work uh, as we go stops these uh, thick knuckles forming and like I say spoiling the, the quality of the tree so looking now at this branch this one was quite weak initially when I bought the tree and so it was allowed to grow unchecked for a couple of years and then in the summertime I pruned that shoot back where my finger is and you can see this is uh, we've got this thick piece here but we've got really good strong buds in behind it so now I know this branch is safe and strong so I can take this piece out and we prune that right back nice and clean So that that can uh, that can heal over nicely another aspect of this pruning is we're always trying to introduce taper into the branch structure by which i mean the branches start thick and they get progressively thinner towards the end so every time you come across a fork like here the branches get thinner from that place from that point onwards <clears throat> so if we look at this little guy here this is another one of those branches that i've allowed to grow uh, for the vigor and the strength of this part of the tree again was pruned in the summer But if you look at that carefully, you can see this coming for emanating from here. It's fairly thick There's not a lot of interest in there. Uh, that's not something we're going to be able to use uh, To make an attractive branch, but we've got this piece above it. So what I can do with this is just go in and Take that away and hopefully you can see that that has now improved the uh, the taper of that branch in as much as it's thick here and then at this point it get much it gets much thinner and then when we come to the ends it gets thinner still so that's why we don't have to worry too much about allowing these branches to grow out because we always want to make sure that there's uh, an opportunity to prune behind them and if the branches are vigor, uh, vigorous then obviously that's exactly what we will get. Around to the next branch we've got this one that comes from here and it forks here, it's an, uh, a, a lower fork here as well. Uh, this branch is a bit of a mixed bag, uh, it was very weak initially but it's much stronger so if we look up to this area here you can see there's uh, lots of strong growth and really big buds but if we come back down to here you can see this one very little going on there at all but it has got decent buds on the end 
Now I want to I keep that for the time being. So we'll leave that unpruned, but then we need to get up in here. And you can tell the vigor of the, of the branch by how big the buds are. And you can see here, hopefully, how big the buds are on, on that, as opposed to when we get in here, the buds in there are about half the size. So obviously this area being much stronger, we can prune this much harder. And we've also got a little knuckle forming here, but this has grown from where my finger is here. And this is this year's development. As I said, maples are not one of those trees that happens overnight. Every year, small cuts, uh, gradual improvements. Now, one of the primary issues with a maple is when it's in leaf, it's very hard for light to get to the inner part of the tree. And so looking at this here, I don't know if you can see this, we've got a lower branch here and we've got this piece above it. This piece above it is much stronger than the piece beneath. And what we can do here is a little directional pruning. So there's just one here you can see, and we can pop that one out of there. That leaves two nice ones behind and it just shortens that back a little bit. And that gets a little bit more light down to these ones underneath, which are weaker. Because you have to bear in mind when there's a leaf on here, it comes out quite a long way. Uh, so a little directional pruning on these sorts of branches can really uncover the ones uh, that are beneath that are a little weaker and the more light they get the stronger they become uh, over the uh, over the growing season. Now the last piece of this branch we've got this one under here which comes from back here that's got two on it and it makes really the very lowest uh, the lowest branch on this on this tree and it was barely even alive initially but you can see now it's done uh, it's done absolutely fine so again we can give that a little prune but i'm not going to go too hard because we're in the very base of the tree here and we don't want to uh, remove too much and then go and undo the work we've done in increasing the uh, the strength of this again we've got a little one here that we can uh, we can take out every little bit that we can uh, we can rearrange to open up the light to these lower branches going to make all the difference but now that these branches are getting much stronger every one of them has got buds further back which as they develop are going to give us more and more opportunities for uh, for pruning as the uh, as the years go by another aspect of pruning uh, maples is that we want to cut branches to grow in the direction we want them to because we're not going to be uh, wiring these trees constantly like we might conifers so if we take this little guy here you can see we've got one long one, we've got two there. Now, this long one here is really strong and we've got good strong buds on these ones behind. So what I can do with that is if you look at this line, it comes through here and it's more or less straight. So what I can do is just go in there, nip that one out, and you can see now that we've got a change of direction. So where it was just running straight along here, it now kicks up and it's moving towards the front of the tree. So as we're pruning these things, we're always looking to create changes of direction. There's another one here that hopefully you can just about see. Now that one's getting a little bit long. We can take this straight piece here. It's also getting a bit thick in the base here. So we can just go in and clean that away. We've shortened it back and we've also created a change of, uh, a change of direction. So that's another thing that we're looking at as I'm going through this. So looking at this piece, it's really strong. It's grown really well. So we've got a lot of buds on here. So we can cut this back quite uh, quite hard if we want to. So first thing, take the middle one out of that. Take those buds out. Take that one back to two, leave that one. And now this one has got two, one directly above the other. Now obviously for those to grow well in the future, we want the one that faces upwards. So we can take that also here, We've got this one on the end, which has got quite a lot of buds uh, and it's not particularly attractive. So again, that one, take that right the way back to this little guy here that's facing upwards. So really we've got two, four, six, eight. We've got about 16 buds on that overall. And so that's pruned quite hard. And then for next year, we're gonna be able to take that back some more because we've got these nice thinner ones behind which are starting to build up really quite nicely now. So this is another really strong one and one that we can get a change of direction out of. As you can see, we've got a lot of buds on here and we've got this long one coming off here, which I've allowed to run. So we can take that out without any problem. This one here, we've got three on the ends. So we take out the one that's growing down and remove the buds that we don't need. 
This one is coming through the middle here, not particularly attractive, long and straight, but we've got one back here that's facing upwards. So in that instance, we take that one and then we'll leave those there. So that's reduced the buds on that by about half, but it's also improved the, uh, the shape of that branch. This low, this low branch at the front of the tree was extremely weak initially, but it's been grown uh, for three years without pruning and again you can see where I pruned it in the summer and really strong buds have formed in there but in the interim we've had these nice two shoots have formed in the back here and then there's another one behind here there's enough buds on there to keep that line uh, line going and uh, so we can take this back some so we just you never prune these larger cuts in one go I always do them in a few small small cuts and then you can get a nice clean cut which will heal nicely and also your branch cutter won't pull in and break that piece off because obviously we're going to uh, we're going to need that so again that's another example of growing a, a branch for vigor and then prune it, pruning it back so the next couple of years this branch is going to twig up quite nicely I'm going to leave the rest of this on here because there's relatively few buds on it and it's a being right at the bottom of the tree it's the weakest part of the tree so what's going to happen is we'll just let that grow and over the next two or three years uh, that's going to twig up quite nicely and at some point we'll probably just rearrange that uh, reposition that with a little wire In the uh, top of this tree and as you can see the growth that uh, I've allowed to run over the uh, end of the summer and what we've got here is a classic situation that happens with maples sometimes when you get very strong branches in the upper part uh, we've got two uh, distinct candidates that are trying to be an apex for this tree now because of the way the trunk line runs this side needs to be the ultimate apex and so this is a branch but because I've allowed it to grow, it's got ideas above its station and so it's trying to become a whole new top. But because of the way I've pruned this in the past, uh, it's quite easy to actually reduce this without having a significant uh, change of the uh, taper and so we're not going to end up with a big ugly scar in this upper part. So by we prune that back down to a small branch that's uh, actually lower on it and a couple of other small ones there and as you can see now actually we can take that one that's now a branch and this is the apex this part of the tree is still very weak so I've not really pruned hardly anything from here at all because there's somewhat of a hole in here so just illustrates that obviously we've got quite a long way to go with this tree to get it uh, to get it fully uh, fully developed and nicely ramified but you don't want to allow a situation like that with two tops to continue because ultimately the branches that support them become very very thick and ugly and that's not what we want in the top of the tree being a maple we're looking for some nice thin and delicate structure we don't want big fat lumps of wood up in the top here so here we're on the very top of this and being the top of the tree it's extremely vigorous obviously the strongest part of this tree overall so at this position we can prune this really quite hard because obviously we know it's going to develop super fast for next year what we don't want to do is leave it too long and then find we end up pruning it back really hard and getting some bad pruning scars so it's important to structure this part of the tree correctly but it's perfectly okay to hit it really hard because obviously it's going to uh, next summer it's going to grow potentially really well really strong and really quickly so actually filling the apex of this tree with ramification is going to be fairly straightforward and easy now that the tree overall is growing really strongly but we've still got lots of uh, areas on this that still need to uh, increase in vigor and strength to get it perfectly balanced all over so this pruning is all about pushing the uh, the growth back as far as we can and balancing the vigor 
as I keep saying. I appreciate this is quite difficult to see but again we're in the top of this tree at the back. Here's, uh, here's a branch which is quite nicely structured. It's got good uh, vigour and good strength on it but this one here is sticking out quite a long way. Uh, it's breaking the profile of the apex that I want to create so we can remove that but we can remove that from here because we've got this little guy further back. If we didn't have this I would be inclined to keep this uh, to keep the vigor running up here and keep this growing but this one has developed really strongly so it's okay to go in and take this big lump away and that's uh, opening up this area of the tree uh, and it's going to encourage this one to grow more and then that will start to fill this area out because you can see this part of the tree is a little bit sparse but this is really important pruning because if we look here you can see this has all grown in the last two years from largely nothing uh, and is super strong but then we only have to come here just four inches away and this part is really quite weak this one's weak but recovering quickly and then we've got this one here which as you can see is not far from the apex at all and that's significantly weak and it's thin and spindly but there are enough buds so I haven't pruned really anything at all off that but it's amazing how you can get a weak branch directly next to a really strong branch and that's why this pruning is important to uh, correct the growth of this and balance it all up so the tree grows evenly all over. So here we have another classic example high in the tree of a branch that's getting an idea above its stations. Uh, it's done really well at reinvigorating this part of the tree but now this which was really only grown as a sacrifice branch can be done away with and again you can see behind here we've got a nice little one here we've got this guy here so we can just go in and pop that out. I always get rid of the fat knuckle swelling at the base of a branch because otherwise it'll just keep pushing out new buds and then it'll just turn into a knuckle and then just a little keonal on there just to seal that up and that's good so you, you can see there that's created a nice change of taper the branch that we've left on is going in the right direction because we want it obviously to fill out this area uh, of the tree and then we've got this little guy here which is doing well that may be next year we might have to give that a prune but all you can do each year with a maple like this is see what uh, what grew what developed over the summer and work with what you've got because uh, that's all you've got I don't tend to seal the very small cuts but once the cuts are over about five millimeters I do like to seal them Kernel works well because it makes a uh, completely airtight and watertight seal and typically those cuts with a vigorous growing maple will grow over in a, in, a, in a single year sealing cuts on maples bigger ones is quite important because if you don't seal it up the cut can uh, dry out it dehydrates and it gets much bigger so with this cut here we've got that nice and clean and trimmed back so just a little dab of kernel on that you don't need to go mad and uh, just enough to seal it from uh, allowing the air in and moisture out and that will heal over quite happily next year so we finished the pruning of this maple for another year and it's really made some significant progress over the summer as I've been pointing out we've still got weak areas we've got strong areas this branch here which is really key to uh, the appearance of this tree thankfully has gone past the stage where it's likely to die off I'm going to be able to develop that further uh, that's worked for the next three or four years and there's still a few holes in this that we need to fill out but all of these branches have back buds they all have pruning opportunities further back so I'm going to be able to compact this a little more in doing so that allows us to open up spaces and get better light into the inner parts of the tree which secures its uh, its future the reason for working this time of year just before the leaves actually naturally drop is because we've got a few weeks uh, where it's not going to be particularly cold and so as a consequence even though the tree's got no leaves uh, the roots are still going to be active they're going to be pushing water and nutrients up into the tree and the buds that remain after the pruning are going to uh, fatten up over the uh, over the next two or three weeks and uh, so the, gr the growth in the spring of this tree will be much more even than it was in, in the last year and so this is the benefit of, uh, of this pruning so we've cut out the dead material we've cut out the overly strong parts 
and uh, we've removed anything that's dead. We've taken the opportunity to create movement and changes of directions in the smaller branches where we can. And as I've been saying constantly, uh, this pruning is primarily aimed at uh, balancing the vigor of this tree. But as you can see, there's still a long way to go. But uh, that's bonsai, it's never finished. Little by little, these things are constantly evolving and improving and uh, so a tree like this in my estimation is going to take seven or eight years to restore back to uh, its former glory but uh, at least it's on the road and going in the right direction so hopefully this has given you uh, something of uh, an understanding of uh, the development uh, and long-term maintenance of maples so thanks for watching